steam locomotives in miniature at the steam workshop, rebuilding a three-inch scale Garrett traction engine part nine. The thing I'm holding in my hand is the simpling valve, and this was originally very leaky, but not anymore, because John's machined the end of the valve and fitted an o-ring. All I need to do now is make some new gaskets and refit the part to the cylinder. A few people have asked me what does a simpling valve do, so in case I didn't explain it fully in the previous video, a simpling valve converts the engine from running in compound mode to simple mode. When you open this valve, just by pushing it, it admits steam from the boiler directly to the low pressure cylinder's steam chest, thus eliminating the compound running, and this makes the engine start whether it wants to or not. And I'm pleased to say this simpling valve is now steam tight, but the regulator is still a bit hesitant to shut off fully, so it's time to take it apart and have a look at it. This regulator is of the slide valve type, a gunmetal block slides on a port face with a hole in it, and this sliding block is in its own steam chest which is at full boiler pressure all the time, and it's just the pressure of the steam that holds the block onto the port face. It's very important that the surfaces on both the slide valve and the port face are perfect, but unfortunately the port face on this engine is not brilliant, it's not scored or anything. When I push the slide valve by hand on the port face it just feels a little bit lumpy as it passes over the hole that admits the steam to the cylinders. So to fix this I'm using some wet or dry sandpaper which I'm lubricating with tea cut, and to do the job I'm using a plastic button that I found on the bench which is very flat and supports the sandpaper as I slide it back and forth over the port face. Then to finish off the job I use the valve itself and I pass that over the port face several times just lubricated with tea cut. Using a felt tip pen I'm making a mark on the inside of the steam chest and this mark corresponds to the regulator being fully over the hole therefore shut. And this allows me to adjust the regulator so that the valve is fully over the hole in the closed position. As you can see, there is some slight adjustment available on the clevises on the end of the rods. In this clip, I'm refitting the steam chest cover, only using four bolts, one in each corner. And as you can see, the steam chest cover on a traction engine like this has two safety valves built into it. So now the pressure is on. Well, not yet, I haven't put the pressure into the steam chest, but very shortly the pressure will be on to see whether it works or not. Mission accomplished. With John operating the regulator and me holding the airline in position, the engine runs beautifully. The original blast nozzle from this engine was lost, I don't know where it went. And this is a quick fix. The purpose of a blast nozzle is to put some back pressure in the exhaust pipe, and this effectively speeds up the exit of the steam, which blasts up the chimney and draws the fire. I found that a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch union nut had a hole which was fractionally smaller than the internal diameter of the main steam pipe, so that should be fine. A while back I repaired the damage done by the shipper to this North British locomotive, and here John is repairing the lining by hand with a paintbrush. Back now to the Garrett tractor, this is what's left of a blowdown valve, it's been broken off. So I'm going to repair and refit it, but I'm not really thrilled with it as a piece of equipment. It's not up to the standard of some other parts on this engine. The first thing to do though is to take out the temporary blanking plug that I fitted to the front of the boiler. And in this next clip you can see how I repaired it. I machined a piece of brass hexagon bar and cut a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch thread on the end of it, not forgetting to drill the hole down the middle, and then I silver soldered the entire fitting onto the end of the original one. In this area of the boiler I don't know how much clearance there is between the belly tank and the throat plate, and for the moment this fitting is sticking out about a quarter of an inch more than it should do really, and if it gets in the way of the belly tank I will have to think again. But I have a sneaking feeling that I will be making a new blowdown valve for the engine. This is a preview of the next episode, I'm not going to include this in this episode because it took such a long time to do, 
I'm refitting the bunker tank. In this clip, I'm showing the fitting of the 2BA bolt that holds the key in place on the crankshaft. Most of the engineering on this traction engine is to a very high standard, and it only takes one 2BA bolt to hold the key in place and attach the flywheel firmly to the crankshaft. As I've just mentioned, the next part of the job is fitting the bunker tank, but first of all, I do need to dismantle this part. As there were no photographs available, I assumed that you just bolted the horn plates into the frames. But no, it's a very special arrangement that I will show in the next episode. You'll have to forgive me, I've never worked on a miniature traction engine before. A kind viewer commented that this was really called a Garrett 4CD tractor, not a Garrett DCC tractor, but it still is a double crank compound, so I will refer to it as that. Besides, I cannot see anywhere on any of the photographs that we have where the CD player goes anyway. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.